with fear today. Mm. Good evening, everybody, and <coughs> I'll start with water. <coughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, uh, Friday talk, uh, the talk where we give knowledge which people have asked. If we have the knowledge, we give it to you because we want everybody to be able to. Um, understand themselves and understand what's going on with their systems. Um, we come from uh, an NGO called She Chooses to Live Initiative, an NGO that um, uh, is geared towards letting people know um, about themselves, about their health, and uh, allowing people to make healthy choices so that they, they do not regret at the, at the I wish I knew. So we usually request uh, the audience to give us questions um, to be able to formulate what we need to talk about. And usually what we, we give is what a lot of people have asked. There is a time we had questions and answers. Uh, times we pick on topics that are of interest to many people, to many of our audience, and then we talk about them. So, um, like I said, we come from She Chooses to Live Initiative. It's, a, it's an NGO that uh, li likes to uh, share knowledge, the knowledge that we have. On my left here is uh, my tech girl. Uh, she's called Marion. She is the technical person here. She puts me online and uh, removes me from online. Um, believe you me, without her, you wouldn't hear my voice because it wouldn't appear. Uh, yeah, so she's the tech girl. Um, I'm Dr. Jen Wakahe. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist by profession. Uh, of, I've, I've practiced uh, gynecologist gynecology many years. Gynecology means um, issues to do with women reproductive organs. That's what gynecology is. So we're talking uh, anything from outside, from the vulva, through the vagina, through the uterus, through the tubes, through the ovaries. That's a gynecologist's job. And uh, there are connections with other things like other, other uh, glands that uh, uh, influence them like the pituitary so those that's our job gynecology then I'm also an obstetrician an obstetrician is somebody who uh, obstetra uh, I've said before on this forum obstetra means standing and staring so w what we do is we just stand between um, somewhere strategic between women's legs and wait for the baby for the woman to deliver the baby and receive it. So as we just stare at the baby coming out, uh, it's up to the woman to bring the baby themselves. Then we pick. So that's what an obstetrician is. Uh, occasionally an obstetrician is called to deliver a baby through the abdomen when a woman refuses us to stare. So then we, we have <laughs> to remove the baby or the baby. It could be either. So we have to remove the baby from the abdomen and then uh, that is called a cesarean section. But much of the time, many times, we are, we are standing uh, in between people's legs and saying push, uh, which is a very interesting word, um, because what is being pushed is pushing a baby out. Anyway, that's what I do. Uh, I've done for, for many, many years. I've received very, very many babies uh, of all shapes and sizes, and uh, they are all very, very wonderful. There is, there is no baby who is ugly. People become ugly when they grow up. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> every baby that I've delivered has been very, very beautiful. So that's uh, that has been my job. Um, a few years back, not very few by most of your standards, but uh, more than 10 years back, I, I thought that I needed more knowledge. Uh, I had been uh, treating uh, you people who I'm still talking to today, the Princess Diana's of this country, uh, treating you in Nairobi Hospital, treating you in Naga Khan, uh, M. Fisher, those that kind of level of girl. And I thought that uh, I needed uh, to know Wajiko. I came from Wajiko. I was a little Wajiko 
I'm still a Wajiko myself, but I've looked after Princess Diana for a long time, and I felt I needed to know the Wajiko of my country. So I went back to school and did what is called public health. And this, this, this uh, initiative, the Shushuzo School of Initiative, is really founded on that public health knowledge because it is um, an initiative that wants to reach the other privileged, the, the, the Wajikos of this country that cannot access the kind of um, care and knowledge that you, Princess Diana, can access. So yeah, I've also got um, a degree in public health, and that's what we normally uh, are applying here. So uh, a lot has, we've talked many topics for, that is, that is my tribe talking. We have talked many topics. Yeah, uh, uh, we've talked many topics, and uh, in some of them you can find them. I do not know where. My tech girl can tell you where. But uh, we talk the ones that many people ask about. And today, uh, the topic that we're going to, to tackle is menstrual abnormalities, because we've had this question over and over and over again. Um, and uh, I think we need to, to enlighten people a little about bit about it. So <coughs> let me take a bit of water and then tell you about menstrual abnormalities. Um, before, first of all, what is menstruation? So we'll talk what is menstruation, then we'll talk what is normal menstruation, so that we can, we can, we can understand what is the abnormality of the menstruation. So what is menstruation? Menstruation is, uh, 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 we call it the weeping of a disappointed uterus. Because what happens is that the uterus was preparing itself to receive a baby. So it makes a very, very nice uh, bloody sponge inside itself, awaiting that the, the sperm would fertilize an egg from the ovary and that the, the, as a pair, the two would join together in, matrim in holy matrimony forever and ever and, uh, and uh, go and uh, make a human being. And the uterus is waiting for that and it makes a very, very nice sponge to wait for that. And if that does not happen, then the uterus gets very, very disappointed. I think the uterus feels jilted or something. And it gets very, very disappointed that it weeps. And when it weeps, what it does is it removes that sponge um, that uh, it was preparing. And because the sponge is attached to the uterus, then there's a bit of bleeding that comes with it. So uh, that, that sponge is removed that month because uh, babies uh, do not like old things. So the uterus removes that one in readiness to make a fresh one for the next month. Because uh, ev every month, hopefully, an egg comes out. And every month, the uterus is really, really hoping that it will carry a baby. And if it doesn't, then the, the, the system sheds off the, the, that sponge. And then the, the, the uterus whips, whips, really whips blood. Uh, that's what it does. So menstruation is that shedding of that layer, and it is accompanied by blood because the, the, the layer is attached to the human body. And uh, this is what is menstruation. Now, what is a normal menstruation? Uh, from the time a woman reaches menarche, that means when they receive the first menstruation, when the, they, they start, the, their ovaries start giving out eggs, which are then not fertilized and the, the, the uterus weeps. Uh, from that time until menopause, then a woman uh, tends to receive period in, in a sort of fairly regular manner indeed. Now, the, the normality of it is, we, we cannot say one normality, but I'll say some few things that are normal, a normal uh, menstrual bleeding. Now, uh, a, a normal period the cycle from the day one, we count cycles of bleeding from the first day it starts to the next first day it starts. So like if it started in 1st of June, if we, we reach, the, the next time it starts is when we call it a cycle. So any normal cycle is anywhere between 21 days and 35 days. So if a woman is bleeding uh, from 1st of June, 
and then uh, bleeds again on 21st of June, that is a normal period. That is a normal cycle. A woman bleeding on the 1st of June and then does not bleed until about the 4th of July, that is still a normal cycle. So any cycle between 21 days and 35 days is a normal cycle. Now, the duration of the bleeding. Some, the normal bleeding time is three days to seven days. If somebody is bleeding less than two days, that's abnormal. If they're bleeding more than seven days, that is abnormal. <coughs> now, what is the amount of blood that is lost by each period? And for each, and I'm not talking a day, I'm talking the whole duration of the bleeding, the, 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 four, the three to seven days. In that period, a woman loses between 20 ml and 60 ml of blood. If it is more than that, more than 60 ml, then it is abnormal bleeding. So now we have established what is a normal bleeding. It's every 21 to 35 days. It lasts four to seven days. And uh, it, it loses, a woman loses between 20 and, and 60 ml of blood. So what is abnormal? <coughs> abnormal is any cycle that will come any less than 21 days. Abnormal is any cycle that will come lo longer than every 35 days. Abnormal is uh, skipping periods uh, more than 35 days. Actually, when we actually call it totally abnormal is if a woman doesn't receive periods for three consecutive months, then we call that totally abnormal. Because uh, in between uh, one and three months, things can be happening that uh, are wa one off. But if somebody is skipping like three months, no, that is an abnormal period, more than 90 days. Now, if somebody loses more than 60 ml of blood, then that is abnormal. If somebody just gets drops, you know, lighter than the 20 ml, that is uh, quite abnormal. If it lasts less than two days, that is still normal. If it lasts longer, I mean, it's abnormal. If it lasts longer than seven days, it's abnormal. If somebody is bleeding in between the, the either the 21 days or the 35 days, that is again abnormal. I want to specifically say one very, very abnormal one, which everybody should be very alert about, and is if somebody is bleeding after menopause. If a woman reaches menopause, the right age of menopause, and they have stopped having periods for two years, and then they start bleeding again, that is very abnormal bleeding, and they should alert, uh, they should go to see the doctor as quickly as possible. They must not feel, um, stigma or feel shy about it, they need to see the doctor. So uh, bleeding after menopause is absolutely very abnormal. Uh, bleeding after sexual intercourse, what we call postcoital bleeding is extremely abnormal. Please, if that ever, ever happens to you, uh, just go and see your doctor and then they, 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 you can be checked and told basically there is nothing, but see the doctor before you you, you you dismiss it and then the other abnormality of about bleeding is if it comes with a lot of cramps coming with a lot of nausea comes with a lot of vomiting that is abnormal even if it was the right cycle even if it was the the the, the right amount if it comes with a lot of cramping and a lot of nausea vomiting that is abnormal now so we have we have two types of broad abnormalities, those, the types that one misses a period, the, the, the period that goes beyond the 35 days. So we call that a delayed period. We shall discuss that one. And then we have the one that is even more frequent or, or and heavier. So first of all, we start with the, the one that uh, uh, quite a number of people have asked about that I've missed my period for a week and I'm not pregnant. What is the problem? So that's uh, part of the reason a lot of you have asked that question. And we'll try to answer that question. So what are the causes of delayed periods? Like I said, a very completely hard-hit person abnormal period is if you, you delayed three months. That is 
absolutely abnormal. But every woman has their own kind of pattern of cycle. So that some women are 28 days, some women are 24 days. And, and if you are 24, you're usually 24, 25, 24, 25, 26, like that. Or if you are 30, you are 30, 29, 30, 29, like that. So every woman has um, a kind of pattern and they can sort of predict for themselves when it is that they were expecting their period. So what causes delays in, in, in your usual pattern, in the usual pattern that uh, you are used to, like the delay for a week, like the delay for two weeks, like what causes the delay? And uh, the, the most obvious reason is that there is a pregnancy, and that is a very, very good reason to cause a delay. I'm, I'm always excited about pregnancies because they produce human beings. So um, that is the first reason why somebody would, would have a delayed period. They can also have delayed periods when just immediately after delivery. The, 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 the body is not, the ovaries are not yet set to get pregnant again, so they, they do not produce eggs. So immediately after delivery, they can have a delay. And they can also have a delay with breastfeeding. In fact, uh, long ago, and it's no longer the truth, we used to be taught that if you are breastfeeding, you can't become pregnant. That is not true. You can still get pregnant. But usually breastfeeding will keep away periods for quite a while. So those, those are natural things that will, will cause a uh, delay in periods. Then the, there is the other fairly natural thing, and that is the age, the age extremes. So that when a girl has just started having periods when uh, we call it menake, when menake sets in, then the ovaries are still too young to be able to, to remind themselves to bring out an egg every month, every month. So sometimes a girl can skip a period, or a girl can skip periods when they are throughout the school term, and then when they come home, they get a period. That is fairly uh, normal in the very, very young. Once somebody gets to age 18, Definitely age 22, they should get no more, I mean regular periods. They, they shouldn't be at uh, their young and their ovaries are not sorted out. So um, when somebody, the extreme of age, when somebody is very young, they can skip periods. And also towards the, the end of reproductive age, uh, towards what is called perimenopause, then one can start skipping periods because the ovaries again they they they, they irregularly shed out eggs, and the, the 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 periods can can be gone. So you can skip a month, skip three months, skip six months, and then finally the period is gone. So those are two natural things that can cause um, uh, periods to disappear. Now, if we pick the un unnatural things, the commonest one is actually stress. Stress, chronic stress, stress for whatever reason. If your body, if you are getting stressed for whatever reason, and this is has to be something chronic. Now, having talked about stress, I, I, l let's say uh, you are woman A and this is woman B. The way your body views stress is not equal. So uh, there are animals which are more equal than others. Some women can take a lot of stress without having their periods interrupted by stress. But women, in fact, women, some women will get what some women would think is very little stress, and their periods will go. So th there is no measure of stress. It's your body that is able to measure the stress and to decide that this is stress is too much and the ovary goes haywire. So it is uh, stress, but I can't give you how much stress that is determined by your body. What your body feels is much stress is what uh, will make it stop uh, ovulating and giving you the eggs and, and giving you the, the, the weeping of, of the disappointed uterus. The uterus will not be disappointed because no egg came and died. So the, the uterus stays uh, waiting and waiting. The other uh, more common abnormal reason why um, uh, periods will miss is obesity. If somebody suddenly puts on a lot of weight, uh, uh, very, if, if somebody is obese over time, 
then the body adjusts, the hormones in the fat cells adjust accordingly. But if somebody suddenly puts on a lot of weight, then they will uh, have delayed periods because of hormonal uh, imbalance, because of fat cells. Now, the other thing is the opposite, the very opposite. If somebody goes on a very, very interesting diet and, and drops weight uh, like this very suddenly, then again, that is a reason for why periods delay. Then there is things like contraception. If somebody is on contraception, especially the hormonal contraception, when starting a contraception, the body is not quite adjusted. And when stopping a contraception, the body is not quite adjusted. And also something, one of the very interesting contraceptions called the, the emergency pill or the morning after pill, those can disrupt periods and make them a uh, delay. Now, we always tell ourselves, we always tell us to do a lot of physical activity and indeed it is very good to do exercise. But if you over exercise your body, for example, the athletes who have to do marathons and things, that's a reason to miss periods. And some athletes will miss periods for six to eight months just because their bodies are really, really over-exercised. And uh, so when, if you are not an athlete, you are not trying to win a medal, uh, do moderate exercise so that you allow your body to remain uh, in, in a neutral position, not, not overdone by exercise. <coughs> the other thing that would cause periods to delay, I think we have discussed that on this forum, is what is called polycystic ovarian syndrome, where it, it's not every month that, an, that the ovary is able to shed an egg and where the, the ovaries make a lot of the male hormones called androgens and that delays period. So somebody with polycystic ovaries may stay even up to six months without having a period. So the, the, the in, it needs to, well, we will talk about the investigations that you need to do to, to know what is causing the delay of the period. The other thing that would cause somebody to have their periods delay, sorry, I keep telling you water is very, very good indeed, are chronic diseases. Something like diabetes will, uh, if it is uh, very uncontrolled, will give somebody a delayed period. Some, some autoimmune diseases will give uh, people, uh, autoimmune means that your body is actually fighting itself. It's, it's, it's taking itself and destroying itself. So some autoimmune diseases will cause um, the, 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 the periods to delay. They'll have an effect on the ovary. The, the other thing, we have a very nice gland called uh, the thyroid. It's somewhere, it sits somewhere here. If you see some, especially women with something swollen here as they, they, they swallow, that is called goiter and that is a swollen thyroid. There, there is a, a reverse of it. It can either be swollen or it can be swollen where you cannot see inside the, 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 the throat itself, inside the, uh, yeah, the throat really, but not the throat of swallowing. So it can be swollen where it is not visible. It can be visible. But if that, that thyroid has got, uh, it, it produces some hormones called thyroxine and uh, if, if these are imbalanced then this can uh, cause a lot of um, um, a lot of period delays in fact the thyroid is so important that when you're pregnant we check that it is okay because again a abnormality of the thyroid can make you even have a miscarriage so it is one of the more important ones the other one is a condition that we call hyperprolactinemia. That means that the body is thinking that you're breastfeeding. You're not breastfeeding, but you're making something called prolactin, which makes milk. And when the body thinks you're breastfeeding, then it thinks you don't need the baby. So the eggs do not come out. So the, the, the uterus has no chance uh, to weep. So that's another abnormal reason for, for it. Uh, these are all things that will, uh, are easily discovered, so it's um, not to worry about. Then the other thing that would cause uh, the delay in periods is if somebody had 
uh, for some people, their bodies are so sensitive that if you do a long traveling, like if you come from here and go to the in winter to those countries which have winter, then a lot of people will miss their periods for that reason. Uh, on very, very rare occasions, uh, periods will miss because there is cancer of the ovary. This is absolutely very rare. It's more common to have periods coming more often with cancer of the ovary than without. Uh, I mean, th the cancer of the ovary tends to give you more frequent periods than making you miss periods. But on occasion, it will happen. And then the other one is some drugs. Uh, for example, if somebody was given chemotherapy for whichever cancer in, in the system, then it tends to suppress the ovary and uh, somebody can miss their periods. So those are not all, but there are a number of the reasons why somebody would um, have a delayed period. And these are things, all of them, that can usually be discovered a few times we are not able to actually tell what the reason is. But many of the times we are able to, to tell, and sometimes it is possible to treat. <coughs> so I've, I've talked about the causes of the, the reasons that make the periods delay. Now let's talk about what makes the periods come even more frequently or come even heavier. And uh, the, the most common one you'll hear us talk about hormonal imbalance. Uh, so that the periods come of you, of you and sometimes they come very very frequently so the hormones of the body can be unbalanced we have we have two hormones uh, actually we have many hormones but uh, they can be unbalanced and that causes a bit of excessive bleeding then th there is uh, things we call uterine polyps uterine polyps are fairly common there are little growths that uh, grow in the in the, the the area that the sponge where the area that makes the sponge that um, waits for the baby in the endometrium and uh, they, they keep bleeding they can keep bleeding on and off on and off many many times usually they are not cancer so I have there are many clients who ask me about the polyp usually poly endometrial polyps are not cancerous they are usually what is called benign but we, we keep an eye on them, we keep checking on them so that if they are growing a bit bigger or if they are, they are, they are, they are changing in character, then we, we can deal with them. But uh, some polyps will usually kind of come and go by themselves. They are very, very common indeed. But what they do is they can cause irregular uh, bleeding. Then there is something we call endometrial hyperplasia. That means that... Uh, that same area that waits, the sponge that waits for the baby, there is a certain uh, thickness that it reaches, but when it is hyperplasia, it means it has overdone itself and has gone uh, very, very thick. And for that reason, it will keep bleeding for a long time uh, before it is finally shed off. And uh, it can cause quite a bit of problem, including a quite severe anemia. Then. Uh, the, 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 there is this, the one called endometriosis. I think I'm not sure if we have discussed endometriosis on this forum, but endometriosis means that those cells that um, that uh, that make the period have invaded and gone outside of the uterus, and they are bleeding other places all over the place, and they are also bleeding. Uh, the inside the uterus and outside the uterus towards where the tubes are and where the ovaries are. So endometriosis is another reason why uh, funny bleeding and especially painful bleeding, painful periods can happen. The other reason that causes abnormal bleeding is, uh, is PID. PID stands for pelvic inflammatory disease and that is an infection of uh, the pelvis itself. It, it it can usually be an infection that comes through the vagina, ascends into the uterus, and uh, affects the inside of the uterus, and ascends, this goes into the tubes and affects the tubes also. And this can cause quite a bit of abnormal uh, bleeding also. Uh, the other things are a bit more sinister. Um, things like uh, cancer of the cervix, that one would come and especially 
especially after having sexual intercourse and there is bleeding that may be a pointer towards cancer of the cervix. There is uh, also cancer of the uterus, the same, the same sponge that waits for the baby can actually become cancerous and uh, uh, cancer of the uterus will cause funny, funny bleeding at the beginning, little, little, then uh, finally quite a bit of bleeding. Then there are people who have been put on blood thinning um, medicines. For example, if a woman ever had a clot in their leg or something, and they have been put on blood thinning uh, medicines, then when the period comes, it can really keep going and keep going and, and be um, uh, abnormal in, in that sense. Um, I talked about the thyroid. Uh, that that one I already talked about, and uh, the thyroid can, uh, uh, if cause a delay. If if the thyroid is working low, it will cause a delay. If the thyroid is overworking, it will cause a lot of bleeding uh, more frequently than, than than usual. Then there are the other things that are not very very good. Things like miscarriages will cause ab abnormal bleeding. Somebody may not even know that they were pregnant. And when they are miscarrying, they will they will think they are abnormal. They are having abnormal bleeding. Uh, things like uh, uh, ectopic pregnancy, which will come with very very abnormal bleeding again, alongside with pain, and uh, things like uh, cancer of the ovary again that can cause quite a bit of bleeding. So when when a period changes, when your period has changed from what we call the normality, it has either delayed, or it has come spotting, or it has come too many times, or it has come too much, or it has come with a lot of pain. Please, please consult your doctor because something could be wrong. You, you, you. It, w it is a wish to tell you that uh, we have done all the investigations and this thing is okay. There is no problem. But it's also good if there is a problem, it is found early. Because most of the problems, if discovered early, will be, will be in a position to help. It's always better to, to, to not say, I wish you came a month ago. So anyway, when your period goes abnormal, what, uh, what will your doctor usually do? You will report to your doctor. I'm sure you will report to your doctor. Especially you, Princess Diana, who I'm worried about is Wajiko. Wajiko may not report to the doctor, they might find it is, is just normal. Uh, but we, we will try to give them knowledge that it's not normal. And even them, they are uh, entitled. Um, uh, tech guy, the thing has gone off. Hello? So sorry, it's um we apologize. We we were just going to talk about investigations and um I think all we tell you is go see your doctor, they will tell you what investigations to do. I think we had told you much about what you need to watch out for. Uh yeah, sorry, it seems we are having trouble playing this video, that's what it says on our side. So we are not able to continue for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. we just end it. So bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Just read that. Yeah. Or in the